And I do apologize for our computer going down right off the bat there. That really, really sucks when that happens. I do apologize to all of our listeners out there who are trying to pick us up. We are definitely trying to get our computer technology resolved so i do apologize for our computers going down we are going to be bringing in rachel kirkland once again here on spaced out radio you know just sometimes sometimes this computer thing has to kick my ass it really does this is why i don't really appreciate online broadcasting because all of a sudden my computer there we are my computer just goes Zip. Like, honestly, I, I'm so sick and tired of broadcasting. But you know what? This is why I'm putting my positivity into 2018 that we are going to be on terrestrial radio. So I don't have to worry about this online stuff. And I, and I recommend for everybody, do me a favor. I made the mistake of buying an Acer computer. I should have never bought an Acer computer when I did, but I did. And I'm regretting it regretting it (laughs) but that's okay that's okay we're moving forward now you were talking as we got about uh, 17 minutes here before we got to go to break uh you were talking yeah i have no idea where it cut off because i realized it's like one of those i realized like i'm just talking and talking and talking and finally i'm like is anyone here No, no. You can blame old Davey for that. Let's just hope that uh, 2018 isn't the, you know, this isn't the sign of things to come, you know? No. No. So how far, where was I? We were talking about kind of getting, like, the physical... I don't know where it cut off. Well, we were we were kind of going along the lines, if I can remember correctly, in regards to you know standing up to what had had happened in 2018 and really convincing yourself and changing the mindset that it's not going to be the same in a brand new year that you could refocus and right. reset reset everything. Right. And my point was, it's not just mental or physical. It's a little. It's a. It's a both kind of thing and um sometimes it's easier if it's been a particularly traumatic year sometimes it's easier to start with the physical and let the mental kind of catch up with it you know when we start doing things differently like in a very physical literal sense like say you join a gym or you start doing yoga or you start meditating or you start doing habits you know starting a thankfulness journal or habits that our physical changes, like you're taking the time to do something different, it literally starts to break up those patterns that we've formed because we haven't, it's, it's new. We haven't done it before. And so it, it requires new neurology to be kind of put in place in your, in your brain. Like it connects different synapses and you know what I mean? Your brain is starting to connect in different ways. So you're rewiring and repatterning for yourself from the beginning when you start with something new like that. So if it's hard for you to change your mental mindset first, then I would start with something physical, start with a new physical practice for yourself. That's going to require that it basically your, you know, your brain is like, what the heck is this? This is new. And just like when you start driving a new way to work or something, it, there's a sense of like taking a new pathway and your brain starts to rewire and re kind of, Uh, pattern itself in a new way so it opens up something that before was kind of you know whether it 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 had just never done it before so there's a sense of starting things new and it opening up within the mind a sense of uh, newness or a sense of like giving yourself room to change does one have to make physical changes to that, though? This is kind of where we were going at the end. You know, like you had mentioned right. about, you know, jumping into yoga. And this is where we see a lot of people, you know, maybe ruin their year because they start off with all of these resolutions. And by the time, you know, two, three weeks, even a month goes by, the rev- resolutions are all gone. You know, we failed. And we're starting <laughs> the year off on a failure rather than a positive. Do you see what I'm saying? <laughs> 
Well, I wouldn't necessarily consider that was three weeks of positive. <laughs> if you started with that, but no, I get you. I totally get you. Um, that's why they need to be integrated, mind and body. I mean, it can't be one or the other. That's why it's essentially both. It's got to be something that feels um, that feels, I guess, also, though, you know, when you're talking and I'm thinking about it now, there's a sense of fluidity with that that, that's, that that I feel like people need to, with resolutions, need to stay open, though, to the fact that, like, okay, say you have some resolution and you spend two weeks working on it, going to the gym or something like that, um, and changing up that aspect of your life. There is a sense of like if if it finishes or there's a sense of it being done or you move on or you change, just staying open to like, okay, I've done that. Like, what's next? You know what I mean? Because sometimes I feel like we give ourselves these expectations with timelines when the timelines are not necessarily what's needed. It's more so the energy behind the change that I feel like is important. Um, and I realize, you know, that I'm talking broad and like if you're trying to lose weight or you're doing something on a very physical level, it may not apply. But I mean more so just like staying open to this sense of like, okay, I'm making change for myself. I'm, I'm changing these patterns that I no longer want to be in. And no matter what it is that you're physically doing to change them, the bottom line is there is an energy of change that you're affecting and doing and doing well. You know what I'm saying? There is change happening. But whether or not that change is for the good or for the bad, that all depends on the individual person, on whether they mm-hmm. want to change. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yes. Um, but if they're in an energy, you know, if they're finishing out, a year, like we mentioned before, that's been particularly in your face or really harsh, uh, hopefully (laughs) they're up for some change, you know. I think the key, too, is staying in that place of letting, of, you know, it's funny with resolutions and, and the energy of something new to come, there's this balance with the paradox and, and, in spirit, there seems to be this balance of duality that comes into play where it's like you want to get really clear on what you want to create and what you want to manifest and what you want to bring into uh, your life. And yet at the same time, you want to stay what I call like open palmed. You want to stay open and not clingy to that to where there is still room for the mystery, you know, room for uh, kind of this cosmic energy to come in and and play with that and create something even grander than we can come up with and give a sense of life to what it is that we're envisioning and so you have to kind of balance that sense of direct uh, creation with also this energy of openness to the change of like let's see where this goes that's why I, that's what I mean by staying in just the core energy of just being open to change and that being the resolution more so than I want to lose weight or I want to, you know what I mean? Something so specific, like I'm going to go to the gym every day for one month or whatever. That may be great because it's change. But if we get so hung up on like this end, end specific, then sometimes we miss, the flow of where, you know, spirit wants to take us in terms of staying in that energy of mystery and openness. And it's the change that's the important thing, not so much like hitting a particular (laughs) goal. I realize that may be counterintuitive to like New Year's resolutions, but I think the thing is, is just staying in that core energy of what it is that you're wanting and if change is what you're wanting to start new patterns to not live in fear to have a sense of uh you know positivity and growth and expansion then then you can find that in a lot of ways and you can have success in a lot of ways if your idea and your expectation of what success is is open 
Does so, that make sense? So do you then recommend people stay away from New Year's resolutions? No, I just think that I recommend that they get really clear about the core vibrational energy of like what it is. When I say core vibrational energy, I mean just like, you know, when you're talking about anything, like, and you just get down to the core of like, what is it that you want? Not the specifics of how you want it to show up. Like, what is the feeling of it? Or what is that core? What does that feel like for you? Like, if you envision, you know, financial success, what does that actually feel like? What does money feel? feel like? What does abundance feel? And maybe that feels like freedom to you. Maybe that feels like peace or contentment or relaxation. What it, what those, the core vibrational energy of like what it is that you're desiring, that is where the resolution should begin. And that's what you should stay true to. And then it still has a sense of being open to how it's going to bloom and flower out and show itself in your life. So do you expect, or should you expect people then to work on it more mentally or more physically or a combination of both at the same time? Is it, does it all work as one then? Ding, ding, ding. You said both this time. I love it. I was prepared. I was prepared. <laughs> I love it. You already knew the answer. Yeah, both. Yes. And and I think it's an ebb and flow. Like some people that are more mental, I think, um, will have a tendency to work at it mentally. And But I think you can't have one without the other. You know, you can't in terms of, of looking at where you want to go for 2018. You can't just look at it mentally and not move into the fruition of like, actually integrating into your physical life. I mean, that's just with anything. It's like, you can't just be all in the mind. You've got to be in the doing aspect too. You know, there has to be some sort of like actionable in it. So yeah, I think I, and vice versa, you can't just be all action and not have a sense of internal processing or internal alignment with what you're doing. You know what I mean? Um, You can't just be mindlessly like going about the actions without actually changing your mental alignment with it. Otherwise, we still have those underlying programs or those underlying patterns or that underlying crap that comes up and paranoia and comes up. And you may be doing these actions, but all the while sitting in yoga class, freaking out and stressing about some bill you got to pay next week. You know what I mean? <laughs> so there's not, a, and if there's not an alignment of the mental and the uh, physical. So I think it definitely has to be both, yeah. Well then, if that's the case where it has to be both, how does one pace themselves in order to do this? Because I'm assuming we're not running a 100 meter sprint; we're running a marathon here. Yeah, um, yeah, I think so. But I think also there, <laughs> you go into running. Did you ever run track? Oh hell no. Um, it's cool. Uh, no, 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 <laughs> no. Okay. Well, I used to run track. Okay. So, so you go into, into a marathon analogy and then I'm like, oh, I start seeing all these visuals of running track. So, um, the mile, so the, it's more like a mile relay. Okay. So I'm going to go into that analogy of like the mile relay, you know, everybody runs a leg of it. So it's a long race, but there's these interspersed short circuit you know what I mean and by <laughs> short circuit sounded but just like smaller uh races within the race so even though like you said it is a marathon there's also smaller races within that of that do have their own sense of completion right so the mile relay or any sort of long distance, but a relay, you know, they each have their own lap that they run before they pass off the baton. And there's a sense of finishing whatever it may be. Like say you have this uh, goal or resolution or desire or intention to um, negate some of your views of lack. So you've had a hard financial year and you want to change that. 
the part of your energy is starting anew and getting rid of your uh, experiences of, based in lack or fear of lack or these types of things, then you may have these shorter resolutions or shorter, like, you know, having a month where there's a sense of peace in all of your financial interactions or where you've gotten your bills on sort of an automatic bill pay, something as simple as that to where it's a shorter achievable energy. But after that, it's like it passes the baton to the next type of thing. And then the marathon continues. So it just has a sense of like you're, you're evolving. Rachel, I'm going to get you to hold on right there. We're going to step out for our first break of the night. Rachel Kirkland, The Spiritual You, happens the first Tuesday of every month. The modern Shaw woman comes in, gives her advice on everything spiritual and zen. We'll be back with more of Rachel for hour number two right after this. Hey, space travelers, it's Joe Roop, your host of Spaced Out Saturdays. Come join me as we explore the realms of the paranormal, the esoteric, and everything in between every Saturday night at 9 p.m. Pacific, midnight Eastern. You know the truth is out there. Don't get caught sleepwalking. Come join Spaced Out Saturdays. That's every Saturday night, 9 p.m. Pacific, midnight Eastern, right here on spacedoutradio.com. Psychic Sundays, spiritual communication, ET contact, Sasquatch in your backyard. We will have it all on Cosmic Passport with me, Elizabeth Anglin. Each Sunday, starting at 9 p.m. Pacific, midnight Eastern, at spacedoutradio.com, I will take you on a journey of enlightenment. The goal is learning from the soul on out. We'd love it if you joined our experience, Cosmic Passport, for Sundays at spacedoutradio.com. 365 days a year, we're in the field, investigating UFO sightings, talking to alien abductees, and visiting secret military locations like Area 51. We're UFO Seekers, official partner of Spaced Out Radio. Follow our daily search for the truth at ufoseekers.com or like us on social media. Catch us on Spaced Out Radio every third Monday of the month as we discuss Area 51, UFOs, and more. And also, don't forget to subscribe to us on YouTube. From coast to coast to coast, Black Light Uncharted is taking on the paranormal across Canada. From ghostly hauntings to the UFOs flying above in conjunction with MUFON Canada, we are closely investigating what's going on in the northern skies and checking out the apparitions that walk among us. Check out our videos right here at spacedoutradio.com. We want to know your thoughts, we want to hear your experiences, and we want you to share your stories. The answers are out there, and we intend to find them. Would you like to become one of our space travelers? All you have to do is click on the space travelers icon at spacedoutradio.com. For only $5 a month, you can get access to some great prizes, as well as private monthly shows, newsletters, and a members-only section on our website. Become a space traveler today. It's paranormal news at its finest. Welcome to The Encounter. At spaceoutradio.com, The Encounter Online is SOR's trusted news source for everything weird and strange going on around the world. This is news editor Eric Markham. Our team of journalists are scouring the planet for those strange stories that rarely make the mainstream. No fear-mongering or fake news here. Head over to spaceoutradio.com and encounter The Encounter. Want to learn more about aliens, cover-ups, conspiracies, cryptids, and the paranormal? All you have to do is tune in S4 as we take over the Spaced Out Radio night, starting at midnight Pacific, 3 a.m. Eastern, each and every Saturday night, right after Spaced Out Saturdays. Hi there, this is Eric Cooper from Forest Moon Paranormal. Join me, Corey Ruiz, and friends as we discuss the hot topics of the night. It's fun, entertaining, and as dark as the night. Find us at spacedoutradio.com. Hey, this is Canadian Paranormal Investigator Mike Moore. The third Wednesday of every month, I'll be teaming up with Dave Scott to bring you Ghosts of the Great White North. Each month, we will bring on guests from across Canada to discuss their ghostly encounters. Canada is a paranormal hotbed with stories you've never heard, so we're going to bring them to you. So get comfy in your Chesterfield, grab a donut, and join us, eh? Eh? 
Are you an experiencer? Have you had run-ins with strange creatures you can't explain? ETs, Dogman, Bigfoot, Werewolves? They're enough to scare the daylights out of anyone. Hi there, I'm Butch Witkowski from your four cop. And on the last Monday of every month, you can listen to me and the host, Dave Scott, talk about the weird and the strange being reported on Spaced Out Radio. I'm going to bring my investigations and sources, you bring your experiences, and we'll figure out the rest together. Strange Days on Spaced Out Radio. Come tune us in at spacedoutradio.com. There's a lot of strange going on in this world, and we can help you find out what's going on with you. Paranormal? Cryptids? UFOs in the sky? Aliens in your bedroom tickling your toes? We have the investigators you need to find out the answers you deserve. All you have to do is head to spacedoutradio.com. Your information is 100% confidential. The SOR Sightlines Report. It's free, and we're here to help. Are you interested in advertising on Spaced Out Radio? Head to our website at spacedoutradio.com and click on our Advertising tab. There, you will find an assortment of ways you can get your product out there with us. From radio commercials to banners and social media. Have a product you like our hosts to endorse? We can do that too. Visit spacedoutradio.com for more details. Don't have time to listen to Spaced Out Radio Live? Wherever you are, the car, the office, the shower, or even if you're traveling, we're right here for you. Each Spaced Out Radio show can be found on iTunes, TuneIn, and on our YouTube channel, Spaced Out Radio Show. It's the perfect way for you to catch up on our shows. For more information, just head over to our website, spacedoutradio.com, and tune in to us today. Do you want to know what's really going on in your world? Do you have questions about who you can trust in the mainstream media? Then look no further than the Rebel Planet. Come get the straight answers right here at spacedoutradio.com. Join me, Jamie Sexton, creator of Rebel Planet News as I fill you in on the stories behind the stories. All you truth seekers, be sure to tune in to Rebel Planet on spacedoutradio.com the third Thursday of every month. The views and opinions expressed by tonight's guest and topic of discussion do not necessarily represent the official policy or position of Spaced Out Radio, Spaced Out Weekend, Spaced Out Radio Limited, its hosts, syndicated carriers, or anyone associated with this broadcast. Would you like to connect with us? Head to spacedoutradio.com for all your latest show info. And hit us up on Twitter using the hashtag spacedoutradio. Now, back to Dave Scott and SOR. Welcome back to hour number two of Spaced Out Radio tonight. I am your host, Dave Scott. Great to have you with us. Tomorrow night on the program, Dr. Scott Kalaba will join us. We're going to talk about doctors who he has talked to who have untold paranormal stories. So these are from real professionals who can't explain what's happened in their operating rooms with their patients and around situations that doctors are, and so much more. We get going at 9 p.m. Pacific, midnight Eastern time at spacedoutradio.com. We want to welcome in everyone listening in on WQEE 99 Rock the Key down in Noonan, Georgia, home of the Walking Dead. We are live as well on the United Public Radio Network, 107.7 FM in New Orleans and over 160 countries around the world. We're also live on the Fringe FM, Renegade Talk Radio out of Las Vegas. And if you're listening in on Revolution Radio, remember, the Double R Machine is a donation station financed by you, the valued listener. Head on over to freedomslips.com and donate today. Bill Cardwell has set the first password of 2018 for the SOR Space Travelers Club. Illywhacker. Illywhacker is your password. Make sure you use it wisely, space travelers, as Bill sets the password each and every night right here on the mighty SOR. Now, if you want to follow us on social media, you can do so on Twitter, at Spaced Out Radio. Give our Facebook page a like, Spaced Out Radio Show. On Instagram, we're at Dave Scott SOR. Our YouTube channel is youtube.com forward slash Spaced Out Radio to get it to our archives, so make sure you subscribe to that. 
And our website is spacedoutradio.com, where we have a plethora of features for you, including joining the SOR Space Travelers Club for 5 bucks a month, rock out to some Bumblefoot, shop at our Spaced Out Radio store, read up on the encounter online, watch great videos from UFO Seekers at Contact TV. We also have our GoFundMe account going. GoFundMe.com forward slash we own the night. That's GoFundMe.com forward slash we own the night. We are trying to raise money to build a brand new studio here for 2018. We got terrestrial radio stations that want to pick us up this month. So we need to hurry up. We need to raise some capital so that way we can invest in brand new technology so we can broadcast terrestrially and take this show where it's meant to go. With your help, we can do that. GoFundMe.com forward slash we own the night. For the, her second hour tonight, and this will be her final hour before Elizabeth Anglin comes in for hour number three. Rachel Kirkland is here, the modern Shaw woman, as we like to call her around here, with the spiritual you. It happens the first Tuesday of every month. Modern Shaw woman, how are you? <laughs> Great. <laughs> you are the only person I know who's ever called called me a Shaw woman. <laughs> I like instead of shaman, I've never heard that. I love it. I think you you coined that term. Well, you know what? It, su- that, it not, suits you better. I-, <laughs> I definitely am a woman and a shaman, so it does make sense. But it's so funny. It just sounds, it makes me crack up every time I hear you say it. Shaw woman, shaw woman, shaw woman. Well, I say it so smoothly, too, that not many people actually <laughs> notice. You know, just slide that Maybe right in I there. just noticed. <laughs> Love it. Love it. That's just the way it has to be. It's just the way it has to be. So that's what we're going with, and I appreciate that, the Shaw woman. In our number one, we were looking at how we could turn 2018 into a very positive year because so many people are coming off 2017 being a very negative year for many out there, including yours truly. And you know, I understand with what you're saying. It's it's a total shift of your mind, mm-hmm. your faith, your strength, your inner capabilities combined with, mm-hmm. you know, your own physical, you know, development on how you want to be treated and treat yourselves. What about treating others? Mm-hmm. Does that rub off mm-hmm. on on making the year more positive? So let's say you're a very negative person, but you decide that you want to go into a more positive realm. Is complimenting people, trying to put smiles on other people's faces, maybe you don't even know them. Does that work in helping build that type of esteem? Well, heck yes. It's not, it's not, I mean, heck yes. I mean, when is that ever a negative? <laughs> trying to put smiles on other people's faces. Um, it's kind of like trying to make people laugh, you know, when you're in a sad place. It's still for those moments of presence. So when you're in that moment, it you're aligned with that energy. So yes, you're aligned with the compliment. You're aligned with the joy or you're aligned with the, uh, you know, trying to put the smile on someone else's face, you're aligned with the smile. So yes, it does. If you're a negative person, um, creating a new pattern like that for yourself in a very real way, just making yourself, it's funny that you say compliments because we do this way too often. I talked about this actually last weekend on my live feed, but it's funny how when people give us compliments, we have that tendency to downplay and not accept the energy of a compliment, right? And be like, oh, no, no, it's not a big deal or like whatever it is that they're saying. It's like we, we don't receive the energy in that compliment uh, all too often or we do, you know, the opposite of we think something, we see someone and they look all fancy or dressed up or we notice something positive about someone and we think it, but we don't share that energy with them. We don't just sit and say you look really nice wow you got really dressed up or what if 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 we don't know them we think oh I can't tell them that I love those shoes or whatever it may be something so simple as that but um, just sharing that just sharing the energy that's already positive within you whether it's just that statement of like that's really nice or I really like that or you know whatever it may be um, something so simple as that just like you said can really change the pattern of something that you've created, you know, or didn't create in the past in terms of being feeling like a negative person or trying to shift that. 
What about moral victories? How do they boost Have one's them. How do they boost one's confidence? So for instance, maybe trying a new recipe or a new haircut or mm-hmm. you know, going against the grain of something that you normally wouldn't do and you find out that you say enjoy it. Like maybe you've you you've disliked roller coasters for your entire life, but you say screw it, I'm going, you know, I'm at Disneyland, I'm going to go on the roller coaster for the first time and you enjoy it. You know, what about you know, pushing yourself a little bit to take on those those everyday fears that a lot of us have. I love that. You know what's so great? Yes, that's exactly what I was talking about when I said like doing something new and staying in that, uh, like giving yourself a sense of creating a new pattern of like, even if it's like you said, trying a new recipe or going a different way to work than the normal way you drive every day. Something simple, like that just is a start of something new. And I love how it was like how you use that word victory, because I I love that, that energy of victory. Like even if it's something small, like the recipe or giving yourself a sense of victory for riding a roller coaster when it wouldn't have, you wouldn't have wanted to do it before. You know, children are so good at this, right. Of trying new things. And as adults, we get so like stagnant and kind of like, man, I know I like it this way. So I'm just going to do it this way. You know, this is the only way or like, (laughs) don't change the thermostat. You know what I mean? Just like this energy of like, it's gotta be this way. And when we, do that, we end up kind of like creating these boxes for ourselves that become too um, claustrophobic, you know what I'm saying? And they don't give us a sense of freedom to grow. And so I love that. Yes, I think that's huge. Giving yourself a sense of space to try something new. And then that second part, which is so paramount, is that victory or that energy of celebration of having done it, of having done something else, something new, or just even the energy of like celebrating the fact that you just did it. That, that's it. You know what I mean? There was nothing that to be achieved other than having done something new of having rode the roller coaster and gotten over that fear or having like said yes to something that you would normally say no to uh, and being open to that. That literally, uh, Again, as simple as these things, the, these things seem, they are creating new like pathways, new patterns in your actual neurology. Like they create a sense of youth and newness and um, growth where there wasn't any before. So it's not something small. That they the actions may seem small, but the effects energetically are huge. Does that work on any age, though? Because, let's face it, the older we get, the more stubborn we get, and we don't want to try <laughs> new things. We want, to, we want to stay with what we know. Yeah, yeah. Well, I've been stubborn since I was a child. <laughs> According to my family, I was, I've got that, I'm a Taurus, I've got that stubborn bull-headed nature, so... I don't know that that comes with age, but probably even more so, I guess, like you said, once I find that as adults, we we get in that pattern of like, well, I've tried it before and it didn't work or, you know, I know what works for me. So this is just what I do. So you have to, the older you get, the more it's not just, it's kind of like being limber, you know, as a child, you just, they can do all those little flips and turns and you know the body's completely limber and mobile and able to move and shift and and the bones haven't locked into place right and then we get older and there's the sense of like I gotta work at this stuff I gotta actually like (laughs) stretch and I gotta make make you know I've got to kind of make an effort here where I didn't have to make so much effort before so I think sometimes we have to break that habit in a more effort focus than when we're younger. When we're younger, there's a little bit more fun and futility and openness to like trying things that are new. And the older we get, we sometimes, again, we have to kind of work at it um, as a more active and, and uh, or proactive kind of 
sense to it. Uh, it doesn't mean it's not possible. It just means it may be more effort. But people will rely on that stubbornness because that's what they know. That's what they've trained themselves to yeah. know. So how do we take our, that training to refocus our mind when it's so ingrained in what we are doing? You, you have to, well, there's lots of ways to do it, but I would go with, <laughs> at least this is me, I would go with the thrill of it. That, that energy that has the thrill seeker to it. And sometimes it's not things that feel, that feel thrilling, but we have to almost like infuse that energy into it, you know, um, like kind of the roller coaster analogy. It's like you can go roller coaster and you're on the roller coaster. You're already on the freaking roller coaster and you can have, you can be clinging to the little pole in front of you or your little safety harness or whatever and be just like, you know, gnawing your teeth the whole time. Or you can just put your hands up and be like, I'm just going to ride this roller coaster, man. And I'm just going to like, woo, I'm just going to really amp up the energy of the thrill of it, you know. And I think that's part of it. Letting ourselves like not, like almost like have fun with the thrill or the fear. Does that sound, you know what I'm saying? Like, like same with like going into a haunted house. You can kind of just be like, ah, like, I'm just going to kind of go with the thrill of these things as like, this is really out of my comfort zone. I'm just going to freaking go there, you know, and push myself um, to explore and, and kind of make a sense of fun out of it instead of tensing up and contracting and making this sense of judgment out of it. And that makes sense. However, people are guarded People don't like mm -hmm. change, and change is very difficult to get a lot of people to make, especially when when mm -hmm. they are so used to routine. Because, let's face it, routine plays a huge part in any sort of change. Mm -hmm. Safety. They feel safe. <laughs> you know, um, we feel it's funny. We create these little boxes, which we hate, and yet, and we complain about them for ourselves, and yet they give us this sense of, this false sense of security or safety, and so we still cling to the boxes, whether it's a moral box of like, well, at least, you know, <laughs> I see it all the time with judgment with people of like, well, at least I didn't turn out like this, or at least I didn't do this, and and it's like you create this box of like, well, I'm okay, because I did, you know, <laughs> didn't do this, or didn't do that, or the same thing with, um, you know, our just choices in life, we have a sense of like, well, this is what's created safety. And I used that example of the thermostat earlier, but, you know, of like, I know exactly what amount of heat I like in my house or what my body likes or what my, uh, what I'm used to. And I don't want to change it. I don't want to move it up one little degree or down one little degree. Um, and yet there could be something You've never even experienced that this might be one degree up or one degree down, you know? I fully understand that. But when it comes to people with their everyday routines that they do, yeah, how far do they push themselves before getting frustrated and saying, well, that isn't working for me. I'm out. I'm going back to what, what I know or what works for me. And a perfect example of that, it's the same way with me trying to learn how to play guitar. It's driving me absolutely haywire that I'm just, I can't get it. And I haven't touched my guitar now in six weeks because I get so frustrated by the change that I am trying to make with working with both hands. But, I mean, that's me personally, but a lot of people out there, you know, absolutely get frustrated the minute that new routine that they are trying to create or that new part of life's balance that they can't create doesn't go the way they expect it to. Yeah, that's what I, it's exactly what I meant earlier when I said you have to stay in that perfect little balance of staying open to the wonder <laughs> of like whatever's coming through is, is something that I, you know, I'm open to experience as well as like just wanting change like not being so clinging to the specific change 
that you want to happen. You know what I'm saying? You have to have that sense of openness to it. Um, and also why it has to stay as much as possible. We have to stay in that energy of fun. If it's not fun, we just don't do it. This is, I see this so often with spiritual practices and I, when I teach workshops, I talk about this with, with just like when people are trying to figure out how to meditate or this kind of thing. It has to be a practice that feels like something you want to do. Otherwise, it's just like beating your head with a brick. You know what I mean? You're just like, why am I doing this to myself? <laughs> it has to be something you enjoy. It does. It doesn't mean that change can't feel frictional at the beginning, but when it does, again, with that analogy of being on the roller coaster, you know, when it's like tick, 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 and you're going up, 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 up the hill, there's this sense of anticipation and there's a sense of like kind of tension, right, in the little buggy or whatever that is that you're in, the little roller coaster seat. There's this sense of like everything's getting tighter because you're getting up towards the top of this hill. But with, when you hit that kind of precipice as we're heading into 2018, you have that option to just let go and try something new and be, have this sense of like, I'm already here. Let's just go for it and give yourself a sense of like fun in the newness. Like, okay, well, let's just see where this goes. And as much as possible, being able to stay with that, with the change in the routine and the change of things like that's going on, viewing it with this sense of like a kid. So do you think then with everything that happens in everybody's life on a daily basis, bill payments, work, overtime, relationships, our time is so eaten up, do you think a big part of the changes we've actually changed having fun for routine and accepted routine as the norm now. Heck yes. I think you're right on with that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yes, it's funny how as a parent, I feel like I see this contrast very clearly. I remember one day it hit me when I said, I remember when I was younger and like a good day was a day where I did nothing. You know what I mean? And somewhere along the line of growing up, I, I changed this idea of like a good day means I get a lot of things done. <laughs> and I'm like, what happened to that view when I was younger where like a good day was like, was just absolutely doing nothing. Like I considered that a successful day. I was like, man, this is an awesome day because I did absolutely nothing, you know? <laughs> and that's kind of where kids are, you know, like my kids, at least on vacation, they want to just badge. They want to, they don't have a desire to go to all these little camps and do all this activity. It's like, they just want to be unrestricted. You know, they just want to have nothing have nothing to do, have no <laughs> sense of, like, of, of requirement. And um, I think we, somewhere along the lines, that shifts when we go into adulthood or responsibility and, you know, have these views that in order to have a quote-unquote good day or to feel good about ourselves or to hit a sense of peace or contentment that we have to get a certain amount of things done or have to be quote unquote successful at certain elements of life, you know, instead of just being, having this idea that it's a good day when I just live life. When you have people who come in to either get a reading or a healing from you in regards to that, how do you go about you know, changing their mindset because it is so ingrained that a lot of people don't know how to have fun. A lot of people are afraid mm -hmm. to let go of their responsibilities, even if it's for an hour. You know, how do you try and break people down and get to their emotional side to say, look, this is good for you. This is healing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, it's different with every person because everyone what's fun to someone may not be fun to someone else, you know? And so we start there of just like looking at 
with that individual, what is it that lights them up that makes them feel inspired? That energy of inspiration and wonder and uh, it's a very youthful kind of like the fountain of youth type of energy, you know, um, all of those things, they're very individualized and sometimes they're super simple, you know, like somebody sitting with a piece of paper and just giving themselves time to doodle something like that. Like as a kid, you know, you just, you do those kind of things. And then as an adult, you think who has time to do that? Or that's, that's not a good use of my time, you know, or that's not productive or what is that? <laughs> yeah. But the energy of that, of the release of the mind of something, something so simple as that, like releasing the mind and just letting the hand almost like channel, just movement, um, is so freeing. And so if that's you or if that's my client and they're sitting there, um, a lot of it is kind of like deductive at the beginning, like trying to get kind of deductive reasoning of going back to like, what is it that gives you a sense of freedom or joy or, or inspiration or, you know, what, what does give you that sense of fun and happiness? And not in a, um, not in a cheap thrill, not like, oh, I just, something really quick and thrilling, but more like in depth, like what is it inside of you that feels good when you do something, you know? So we have to kind of search for it sometimes because as adults, we, we lose it a lot. We, we put everything else on top and we forget a lot of times, like, what is it that I actually enjoy? Like, what, what does bring you joy? Because we're just not practicing or doing nothing. And just out of habit, we start to lose track of, like, what is it? You know, and, of course, we change and grow, too, and our interests change and grow. And so unless we're actually seeking out things that we're into and validating that, and by validating, I mean giving actual time and um, value to it for ourselves. Um, then sometimes it's a search. We start with that. We have to find it. You bring up a very good word, value. And Mm -hmm. I I know with the stress that I've been going through over the last number of months, I've used that word more times than I have Mm. probably in my lifetime is trying to figure out what my value is. And I know there are a lot Mm -hmm. of people out there trying to figure out, you know, what their value is. What's, what, what gives them validation as a human being? And it's difficult for a lot of people because we're so beat down on a daily basis. And I'm not saying that to be depressing. This is just the truth of it. Why cover up the matter when it is happening out there? And I'm a firm believer that the only way you can fix something is if you can talk about it. So let's talk about it. You know, a lot of people don't feel that they have value. And I don't mind with my depression and anxiety coming out and saying that I question mine. Everybody thinks, you know, that I'm a very happy-go-lucky guy because I got this successful show going on, but I battle. I battle really, really hard. And there's a lot of people out there, Rachel, who are in the same boat, just not as public about it. So how do you train someone to remember that whether they feel their life is falling apart or whether they're on top of the world, that they still have the same amount of value? Yeah, I think I love that that you shared that because I think, first of all, that in itself is good to remember that everybody, that that is part of the human experience, okay, is the spectrum of emotions. And everybody, I don't care if you're the president of the United States, there are days when you go, what the heck am I doing with my life? What in the heck do I have to offer? Why am I on this freaking planet? Like everybody I don't, I don't care who you are. Everybody goes through that. No matter how successful you are in the view of others, it, when you are viewing yourself just in your own internal heart, there are always, you, you cannot have expansion and growth without first starting from that place of like, where, what the heck am I doing? So, so everybody's been there especially those that are trying to grow and change and make effect and positive movement and and things like this in their life. So 
I want that first. I, I just feel like that is important that you share that. Like, I don't feel like that is a sign of failure or depression. I think that is a sign of very, uh, of being awake to the fact that, you know, things are not the way I want them to be. That's the precipice for change, right? For making something um, bigger than what was or having a sense of um, effect on your life and not just living mechanically and without you know, a mind to change things or, you know, so I don't feel, I just want to put that positive spin, so to speak, on that aspect that it's, it's okay. It's normal. It's actually the beginning or the the cosmic womb of creating something new. We all start in that muddy place of creation, right? Where it's all bubbly and this soup, crappy soup. And we go through those cycles constantly. So it's not like you get over it and then you're over it for life and you're, you never go back to that, you know, depressive energy. It's cyclical at times because you grow, you change, and then you grow again and you change and you go. So there's always this sense of like death and birth, death and birth. And first of all, for everyone, I would just, I just wanted to highlight that point that that, that is a, I don't feel negative about that. That's a very positive creation space. And when you're in it, it sucks because you're in it. You're just in it. You know what I mean? But that is a creation space. That is a space where we go like, what the heck am I doing with my life? What do I want to, what do I want to experience? This is my life. I'm living it. Like, do I want this? You know what I mean? And then it moves into a sense of change or a sense of desire for something that contrasts where you are. So all that being said, I feel like that's a good place to start. Um, And then from there, like where you want to go and just having a sense of openness with that, um, and, and kind of being okay with where, where you've been and then also being, I guess, motivated to make something new is the catalyst or kind of the push for actually bringing about that change. Almost like the deeper you go in the depression, the more motivation and trampoline that you have to move forward and to make something massively different. I agree with you on that, you know, because for those who do suffer from depression and anxiety, you know, you always have to look for that fix. You know, it's like a you're searching mm-hmm. for a drug to get you that high because when the lows are low, they are horrific. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. They are they are absolutely mm-hmm. terrible. And I and I strongly believe that you know, we all have that ability to get to that point where we need to be on a on a strong level. You know, a, but mm-hmm. giving yourself value I think is one of the most important things that you can do because when you value yourself so little, and I've been helping with a friend of mine, you know, who I used to work with in radio 10 years ago, he's been battling suicidal thoughts recently, and we just lost one of our radio buddies that happened to be his best friend due to health Mm -hmm. issues. And so when you add it all up, he's sitting there wondering, you know, what's my worth? You know, I do the same routine every single day. I have no value. What good am I? You know, and he has all these questions, you know. Where do you start the line, the process of showing people and your clients where their value is? Do you get them to write down a list of positives, like the old Benjamin Franklin type attitude, the positives versus the negatives? How do you do it? Well, it (laughs) it depends on the person. If you're a logical person, and if I'm sitting with a client and 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 their energy is more in that masculine masculine logical systematic energy then that would that may make sense of making a list you know if you're a list person and this is the way that you process life and this is the way that it, you feel um secure and grounded and directional 
then a list may be the most effective, efficient way. Um, others, it, if, if they're more of a doer, a kinesthetic person, or they have to feel it and they need a tangible, then there may just be something of actually reminding them, like going out and doing something for someone else, like feeling that feeling of having someone depend on you, you know, having someone validate your worth, your, um, you know, what you mean to them, that type of thing. So going out and helping others or serving in some way um, and activating that energy of value of like, you are important, you are needed. And um, the universe is, is a redundant universe. It doesn't make anyone the same. It doesn't repeat. It doesn't, if you're here, you have purpose to be here. Otherwise you wouldn't be here. <laughs> so there's, there's a sense of always kind of finding what that, is and pulling that out it, you know what it's funny Dave it's, it's simpler than we make it out to be it really is like when people ask me like what is my purpose what is my purpose I get that all the time from clients like I want to know my purpose if they they have a question for spirit a lot of times that comes up as a core question and a lot of times it's not all the time but a lot of times when I'm channeling that for people it comes back to be themselves, to be them on this planet, as simple as that, to fully be themselves. That's what they came here to do, not to, to, not to do it any other way. And it doesn't have anything to do with what career you pick or what, you know, partner you pick. It's that you're fully embodying yourself. And there's so much value on, in that because there's no one else that's you. I mean, literally, there's no one else that can be you and embody that energy on this planet but you, no matter what that looks like. And you can't really get it wrong. Do people see that, though? Or are they just so self-immersed in what they are trying to, you know, fight for themselves because they feel like they've been fighting for so long that they just can't see mm -hmm. what's on the other side anymore? That's a big wall to step over. Mm-hmm. No, you're right. It is. And sometimes you have to, you know, eat the elephant one bite at a time. <laughs> so you go bit by bit instead of trying to just like jump over the wall. But, but yeah, you know, some, some, it depends on where they are. You know what I'm saying? If, if in an extreme situation, like you were sharing about your friend, if someone's in a, in a suicidal energy, you can't just come from that to like rainbows, you know, and this idea of, of extreme sense of self value and worth when they're in that particular energy In that particular energy, when you're with someone that's there, it's more so just being present and loving in that moment. Once it's, it's so it is bite by bite, you know, um, I use that analogy of like, how do you eat an elephant? You eat it one bite at a time. <laughs> Not that anyone would want to eat an elephant. I don't know where that came from. Whoever came up with that, <laughs> that phrase, but, and I don't know, maybe y'all don't have that phrase in Canada, but, but that, that phrase is just like eating something huge like that. You take it one bite at a time. You know, when you're in that extreme energy, it's, it's bit by bit by bit, but all of those, just like the marathon too. It's bit by bit by bit. And all of it adds up in the end to a beautiful life, you know, with lots of crazy twists and turns and stories along the way. Well, I think that's a good message for people to learn because, once again, it comes down to full routine. What are we used to? What do we like? What channels or television shows do we watch on a nightly basis? We have schedules down pat. Mm -hmm. The memory is very mm -hmm. good for that. You know, for instance, mm -hmm. I drink a lot of Pepsi. I don't drink coffee. I don't drink beer or much alcohol my addiction is pepsi i know that i need to go upstairs and drink water instead and probably within a week i will shed like nine pounds that's just the effect water mm -hmm. has on me but pepsi is just so damn good <laughs> you know like it is, it is a major shift for a lot of people it's a major mental mm -hmm. shift 
Mm -hmm. Diet is in general. It's so funny how sometimes when people are come to me for health stuff and we're doing healing and spirit may just say like, oh, you just need to cut out dairy or something. And they'll just be so angry. They'll be like, what? I came to you. <laughs> I don't want to hear that. You know, it's like, I'm like, oh, I'm just going to tell you what I got. Not what I got, you know whatever it may be, but it's so funny how dietary changes. I mean, I'm, I'm right with you. Um, anytime, you know, it, I don't know what that is, but we just, man, our bodies, we, we get in this one little bit of craving or happiness with our sugar or whatever it may be. Um, sometimes that seems so abrasive to be like, no, I can't have that. Rachel, earlier I asked you, and we got into the phrase or the analogy of, is this a marathon rather than a sprint? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we both agreed it, it's pretty much a marathon. Do you suggest breaking mm -hmm. up a new year to set little goals for yourself? Like, what do I want to accomplish in the first quarter? Almost like what businesses do with profit. You know, they have to release yeah. their financial statements every quarter. Do you need to, or should people be making some sort of statement every quarter to themselves that this is where I want to be by the end of March and this is where I want to be by the end of June? You know, is that the way we should be doing things? I love that. Um, I don't think there's a, um, I love that idea. I don't think everyone has to do it that way. Like this is the way you should be doing it and you're screwed if you don't. But there's a sense that um, you just, that small victory energy that we brought up earlier and you talked about like, you know, the, having the sense of moral victories and doing things differently. That is very, very um, momentum building. So it brings about the change even faster and helps us bring about and be okay with the change even more so. So it, it's like, you know, just a ball of snow rolling down a hill. If you give yourself a sense of like smaller goals, say each quarter or whatever, even, even shorter than that, even like, you know, this month I'm going to do these things or this by this weekend I would like to have done one thing for myself. It, you know, whatever it may be, these small victories, there's a sense of momentum that you get going energetically and you're like, I did it. I did this. This is awesome. There is, I am affecting change. I am, my, my year is different already. And so you have a sense of, of building and, and seeing your progress and then seeing it rewires that sense of belief and validation that this is happening. This is real. This is true. This is something you can hold on to. So uh, it secures it even more so into a foundational energy of like um, making it real for you. So, yeah, instead of this one big year long goal, I would say the shorter, you know, smaller victories you give yourself, the better. And then, realizing when it's done too. Remember, you have to have that sense of closure energy or, or resolution each time you have achieved something. You have to have the celebration, right? Otherwise, there is, it just, it leaves it open-ended and there's no sense of um, moving it into a foundation. It stays up in this etheric energy. And, but once we celebrate it as being done or like, I did that. That's awesome. I did achieve that. Um, it's, it builds that snowball even more so, and it really grounds the change. So it makes those new patterns for ourselves move into more of an effective, like foundational aspect. So in the first third of the year or first quarter of the year, what should be mm -hmm. the goal that people focus on? I realize everyone's different. I'm trying to get you to generalize right now, but let's break mm -hmm. this down quarter mm -hmm. by quarter. What do you do in the first quarter? I, I would say like to clarify what change you want in your life. And I would remind everybody what we talked about earlier in the show about that, that core vibrational energy, like what core vibrational energy do you want to 
uh, change or have effect in in this year. So whether it be bringing about peace, you get as basic as you can. You get as as basic as you can in terms of the feeling of what you want to experience. Um, and so for that first quarter, I would just get clear about like what, um, I guess, feelings. <laughs> feelings is kind of, a, I, I use that in terms of, vib- of a, a vibration, what you want to be emitting from you. Like as if you've got this, you know, frequency that's just like emanating out of you. What are those core ones that you want to be experiencing in your life? Get clear on those. And then within the goal of that first quarter, have some things that bring about those energies, whether it's love, if you want to experience love, and things that, that you know, kind of amplify that energy of love, of self-love, of having a sense of, um, making you feel special or making whatever it is that activates that energy within you. So give yourself little goals that activate those core vibrational energy for you. Uh-huh. And uh-huh. it may be something new. Uh-huh. Now, what about the second quarter of the year? What would you say the plan is so, for that? I Then I would say you would assess the first, okay? So then after you would assess and celebrate whatever was done that first quarter. Um, And from that assessment, if there were things that you wanted to work more on or, you know, ideally if the snowball should be rolling. And so energetically that should have created more experiences or new desires or new avenues for experience or opportunities. And so from there, the, resolutions or the goals or the next quarter focus would almost be pinpointing a little bit more specific from those opportunities and changes that occurred from the first. So it's just a little bit more like refining the subtle energy that you already had changed from the first. So it's getting a little bit more and more and more specific. And then towards the end of the year, it would be the same thing. It would be refining uh, once you celebrate all the change Uh, that those previous snowballs and momentum brought into effect, then it would be getting clearer and clearer and more defined towards the end of the year of exactly what you want, quote unquote, accomplished or experienced or played with or dabbled in, you know, again, still having that energy of openness for what comes through, but almost a sense of clarity of like um, that this is where I have been and so this is more of what I want, or I've already played out that avenue, and so now I want this. You know, so it's cumulative. I would say it's more like a sense of assessment after each quarter, and then a subtle redefining of that. So we're halfway through the year, and what do we do for the final half? Let's start off with the third quarter. Well, that's what I, that's what I mean. It's like if you're building and building, <laughs> then it's just a constant redefining. Like with each quarter, you would end it and have that sense of resolution, have that sense of like closure of like, what did I learn? What did I achieve? What, you know, give yourself that sense of finishing that. And then even with within those goals, if there's things that you saw that you wanted more of or you wanted to explore further or you wanted completion, whatever, those are going to have a sense of showing you what the next quarter would bring. I mean, and that's how, you know, even within a business, like you finish a quarter and then you set new goals for the next quarter because they automatically snowball into something else. And so with each assessment, there's a redefining And by the end of the year, the end all would be a very clear kind of uh, direction of like what you want to manifest for the totality of the year. But you've gotten there by this momentum energetically that started out pretty open and basic on terms of that core vibrational energy. And then the specifics of how that plays out um, gets more and more defined throughout the year. So by the end of the year, going into the fourth quarter, then everything should be settled. Everything should be on straight, and you should have momentum going into the next year on a scale of positivity. 
Yeah, exactly. We only got about five. Yes, yes, yes. We've only got about five minutes left with you. Mm, TikTok. <laughs> it always it, goes by fast. It does. It really does. So with that, how do you look at 2018? Do you see a year of positivity? Do you see a year of change? Do you see a year of of instability the way it seemed the last couple of years? How are you looking at 2018 overall? So 2018... Um... You know, it's in terms of if you, I don't know if you study numerology or the root, root numerology, 2018 adds up to an 11, which is a master number. Master numbers, um, you know, like 11, 22, 33, they're master numbers. And 11 stands for illumination. So it is the year where all comes to the light and it is the year of mastery. So for me, I feel very positive about this year. It it doesn't mean it will be easy because mastery is not come about easily, but it's, it's typically a year of fruition of everything that we've been working towards, that we've been building up. Um, all of this kind of lessons learned, this 2016-17 energy of like, all right, I've learned the freaking lesson. Let's move on. There's a sense of fruition to 2018 that I'm really excited about. I feel like there's a lot of momentum that's been built up and built up from these past years. Um, Even though they've been difficult, it's like, okay, the groundwork has been laid for all of this that we're wanting to see change and wanting to manifest uh, in major ways. Like, because we went down so deep, like I said, that trampoline bounce is really bouncing up for 2018. And I just feel like there's a lot of positive trajectory within the course of this year. So I just, I feel great about this year. I love, I love it. I love the energy of ending what had happened in 2016, 17, just a lot of that and pulling up our mastery levels, really, really stepping into that sense of, like you said earlier, that sense of self and value and like, this is what I want to do. And this is, uh, how I'm going to live my life. I'm going to, I'm going to really do it. It's kind of that do it energy. And in terms of illumination, um, there's just a sense of everything coming forward. You know what I mean? No more hiding. It's all here. It sounds so easy. And I, I hope you're right on that. And I know I shouldn't use the word hope. You'll probably slap my hand for that, <laughs> you know, because we have to be able to manifest it being correct. Yeah. We have to manifest that positivity. Yeah. So yeah, you do. You Go ahead. You do. So as much as as much as possible stay in that light of it. When when you feel yourself kind of like, Oh, I don't know, stay stay light and not not heavy. Illuminate it. Illuminate it. What feels light to you? Laughter, what feels light? You know what I mean? Like, go to those type of energy activators in those moments that you feel yourself tense up. Mm-hmm. And I guess it's okay to be nervous. It's okay to be scared. But it's how you deal with that. Yes. Yes. That's the, that's the perfect, you know, like the roller coaster. It's okay. You're going up on this really high height. It's okay to feel that feeling of fear. But if you can transmute that into thrill into like woo baby here we go like there is a fear there there's no there's no lying or denying that that's scary to anything new it it activates that fear energy but if you can transmute that into that feeling of thrill and wonder and curiosity and you know um youthful like i'm just gonna go for it um, that opens you up to all sorts of new energetic <laughs> um, movement and change, blessings, positivity, all of that. So how does so your not? how does your 2018 look? As we got about a minute and a half here left with you. My 2018, I'm staying in that energy of open wonder. Like I've got a lot of things I want to see. Um, 
I'm going to be teaching a lot, traveling a lot. I'm launching um, a new website, working on a book. I'm doing lots of lots of stuff. But I'm staying like, yeah, I see all of those things that I desire. But again, I'm staying in this energy of like, all right, spirit, let's let's bring it on. Show me what show me what I'm not seeing. You know what I mean? I love staying in that energy of open wonder, that mystery, because it always I'm always blown away by what spirit brings into my path. And as much as I think I'm being really, really clear in what I want to manifest, I'm still like blown away and like, whoa, didn't see this one coming. All right, let's go for this. <laughs> Why not? So I'm Why not saying that. Yeah, exactly. Sometimes you got to say what the hell and just go with the flow. I love that. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Usually I use a different word on that end, but we'll stay, stick with hell in this one. <laughs> Quickly here, pl- pl- please tell everybody, Rachel, where they can find you on your website. Okay, so you can find me on the modern shaman.net. It is shaman and not shaman woman on my website. You're going to have to change <laughs> the modern that. modern shaman.net. <laughs> no, no. You've coined me differently. But on the website, yeah, it's modern shaman.net and everything that's the hub of everything that's connected to me. So they can get on my YouTube channel through my website. They can get on my Facebook stuff through my website. And uh, in terms of sessions or where I'm traveling or the classes I'm teaching, it's all on the website, the modern shaman.net. And we will talk to you on February 6th, the next time you were on, the first right. Tuesday of the month. You take care and congratulations on a good start to 2018 for you. Thank you. You too, Dave. All right. We will be back with more Space Out Radio, hour number three, Thought of the Dave and Elizabeth Anglin, coming up after this break. Looking for a place to advertise at a very reasonable cost? Look no further than Spaced Out Radio. Spacedoutradio.com has an advertising tab that you can click to check out our daily, weekly, and monthly packages to play on the radio or our website, including social media. From commercial spots to banners, we have it all. Check out our competitive pricing today. There's stories, then there's the truth. Do any of us really trust the news anymore? This is Jamie Sexton, owner of Rebel Planet News. The third Thursday of every month, I appear on spacedoutradio.com to bring you the truth you deserve without mainstream media lies or alternative media fear mongering. We'll get to the heart of the story and deliver the truth you are seeking. So come join us here for the Rebel Planet at spacedoutradio.com. We're lighting the void on Saturday nights on Spaced Out Radio. Hey, this is Joe Root, and I'm hanging out in SOR headquarters every Saturday night, bringing you the latest news when it comes to the weird and strange. Bigfoot, occult, UFOs, ghosts, and everything in between, I got you covered. You can tune in to spacedoutradio.com starting at 9 p.m. Pacific, midnight Eastern time. Come travel into the void with us on Spaced Out Saturdays. Not ready for bed on Saturday night? Right after Spaced Out Saturdays, hop on over to S4 with Corey Ruiz and me, Eric Cooper from Forest Moon Paranormal. With S4, there are no limits to what we try and uncover. From government conspiracies to helping clean up the paranormal, no topic is safe on S4. We get to the heart of the matter, of the subjects you want to learn more about. So tune in on S4 starting at midnight Pacific, 3 a.m. Eastern, only on spacedoutradio.com. Visit purpleplates.com today. For over 40 years, the Purple Energy Plates have been delivering amazing results for their many customers. Inspired by the great genius Nikola Tesla, the harmony, healing, and energetic effects of the plates have proven over and over to be beneficial and often miraculous to thousands of customers. Check their site for daily specials and choose from their many energy products. You won't be sorry. Visit them today at purpleplates.com. Hi there, I'm Butch Witkowski, lead investigator with Euphoricop. On the final Monday of every month, you can listen to me and host Dave Scott on Spaced Out Radio's Strange Days. We're going to get to the heart of the matter when it comes to what's happening out there. People are seeing and experiencing things from ET contact to Bigfoot, and I want to hear about it. Your experiences are what we investigators need to help solve these unknown mysteries, so tune in at spacedoutradio.com 
through the final Monday of every month from Butch Wachowski's Strange Days. This is Eric Markham, news editor for the Spaced Out Radio's The Encounter Online. We have put together a great team of writers and journalists from all over the world to bring you top quality paranormal stories. From alien encounters to the latest conspiracies, you won't find any of that fake news here. True stories and top-notch reporting as we look to bring these experiences to the mainstream. The Encounter, online, only at spacedoutradio.com. Do you want to know the truth? Do UFOs exist? Are aliens real? Are the governments hiding the biggest secret in history? We're UFO seekers, and we're on a hunt for the truth. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow along with us as we journey across the United States visiting UFO hotspots and alien hotspots trying to document the UFO phenomenon. Catch us on Spaced Out Radio every third Monday of the month as we discuss Area 51, UFOs, and more. And also don't forget to subscribe to us on YouTube. Become more intimate and interactive with Spaced Out Radio. Join our Space Travelers Club with your new membership. For $5 a month, we'll provide you with special access to the website, monthly prize draws from books to psychic readings, along with monthly newsletter, private interviews, and more. Sign up today to be part of Spaced Out Radio's experience. Don't have time to listen to Spaced Out Radio Live? Wherever you are, the car, the office, the shower, or even if you're traveling, we're right here for you. Each Spaced Out Radio show can be found on iTunes, TuneIn, and on our YouTube channel, Spaced Out Radio Show. It's the perfect way for you to catch up on our shows. For more information, just head over to our website, spacedoutradio.com, and tune in to us today. There's a lot of strange going on in this world, and we can help you find out what's going on with you. Paranormal? Cryptids? UFOs in the sky? Aliens in your bedroom tickling your toes? We have the investigators you need to find out the answers you deserve. All you have to do is head to spacedoutradio.com. Your information is 100% confidential. The SOR Sightlines Report. It's free, and we're here to help. You hear footsteps in the empty room above you. A rocking chair begins rocking by itself. Don't be afraid of the things that go bump in the night. Reach for Spirit Story Box, the iPhone app the Huffington Post UK called the only ghost hunting app you will ever need. Spirit Story Box, the spirits are telling their stories. It's Cosmic Sundays with me, Elizabeth Anglin, in Cosmic Passport. Let me take you down a three-hour spiritual journey where we will get into everything from ET contact to Psychic Sundays. It's a journey of listening and learning together with some of the best professionals in their fields. You can tune in to Cosmic Passport at spacedoutradio.com every Sunday starting at 9 p.m. Pacific, midnight Eastern. The views and opinions expressed by tonight's guest and topic of discussion do not necessarily represent the official policy or position of Spaced Out Radio. Spaced Out Weekend, Spaced Out Radio Limited, its hosts, syndicated carriers, or anyone associated with this broadcast. You're listening to Spaced Out Radio with Dave Scott. Follow Dave on Twitter at Spaced Out Radio and hashtag Spaced Out Radio and on Facebook Spaced Out Radio Show. Now, back to the program. Welcome back to the third and final hour of Spaced Out Radio tonight. I am your host, Dave Scott. Great to have you with us. Tomorrow night on the program, Dr. Scott Kobaba is going to join us. We're going to talk about real-life stories of paranormal from doctors who don't really believe it. Scott has a great book out about it. We're going to learn more about these stories at 9 p.m. Pacific, midnight Eastern time at spacedoutradio.com. We want to welcome in everyone listening in on WQEE 99 Rock the Key down in Noonan, Georgia, home of the Walking Dead. We are live as well on the United Public Radio Network, 107.7 FM in New Orleans, and over 160 countries around the world. Great to have you with us. We're also live on the Fringe FM, Renegade Talk Radio out of Las Vegas. And if you're listening in on Revolution Radio, remember the Double R Machine is a donation station financed by you, the valued listener. 
on over to freedomslips.com and donate today. Bill Cardwell has set the first password for 2018 in the SOR Space Travelers Club. Illy Whacker. Illy Whacker is your password. Make sure you use it wisely, Space Travelers, as Bill sets a password each and every night right here on the mighty SOR. Now, we're all over social media. Find us on Twitter, at Spaced Out Radio. Give our Facebook page a like, Spaced Out Radio Show. On Instagram, you can follow me at Dave Scott, SOR. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Go to youtube.com forward slash Spaced Out Radio for our archives. We're also on iHeartRadio in the United States. Talk stream live. Tune us in on TuneIn. Download and subscribe to our shows on iTunes. Our website is spacedoutradio.com, where we have a plethora of features for you, including joining the SOR Space Travelers Club for 5 bucks a month, rock out to some Bumblefoot, shop at our Spaced Out Radio store. You can also watch great videos from UFO Seekers and Contact TV, read up on the encounter online, and please, if you have the opportunity to do so, either donate or share our GoFundMe account. It's gofundme.com forward slash we own the night. Once again, that's gofundme.com forward slash we own the night. Help us build a new studio. We have terrestrial radio stations right now who want to pick up this show. We have to improve the studio. So anything you can do to help out, we'd kindly appreciate it. Hour number three of the Spiritual You, we always bring in Elizabeth Anglin from Spaced Out Sunday's Cosmic Passport. Elizabeth, it's great to talk to you for the first time in 2018. Where are you? We, oh! we hear you. We hear you. Now we don't. No. Stop hitting the mute button. I'm trying. She definitely has gnomes. You guys say I have that. Gnomes. You, you're the one with the gnomes. Your, your, your voice keeps cutting out here. What's going on? Gnomes. Yes. Ah! We got you now. Oh, you got me? We got you. Oh. You, you can okay. stop you can stop the screaming in my ears. <laughs> I would appreciate well, it's that. So sorry about that cuz I'm actually on Skype mute, but I guess Skype mute is not working. Um no. it says it's on mute. So. I, I I highly recommend the mute button on your microphone. <laughs> yeah, that doesn't work either. I'm so glad to be here. I'm glad I didn't end up in a pocket universe and have to get saved by uh, Dr. Who and some other psychic with a blue gem on her forehead. That's what I did. I watched Dr. Who. On New Year's? Yeah. I watched a lot of Dr. Who. So what do you do? I Let's see. After the little guy went to bed, I went down into the studio here and... I was trying to be creative. I just couldn't do it. So I went and I hopped on Poker Stars, played in a couple of tournaments, you know, trying to up my game for because I definitely want to get back to Las Vegas this year a couple of times. So got to practice. So I was practicing on there and I was watching YouTube videos of Airsoft because I'm really into the Airsoft. I, I, I really want to play it. So I have to go get an Airsoft gun so I can shoot BBs at people. That just seems like all sorts of fun. And, you know, rocking away. Just kind of spending my night just chilling out. I listened to your show. I was surprised that you were on on New Year's Eve. And so I, I just... I have no life. Yeah. <laughs> I, I know the feeling. I know the feeling. You know? So that that's kind of what I did. And I, I wanted to actually say thank you for that. Because, you know... Uh, not everybody goes out. Not everybody goes and, you know, celebrates, you know, New York City style or, or even, you know, restaurant style or party style. There's a lot of us out there who, who like to just kind of hang out and, and relax. And yeah. that's, and that's uh, where I thought you, you stepped up to the plate and you did well. Well, thank you. Yeah, I, I talked to Paul about it, and I said, Paul, we'd normally do a Psychic Sunday on this Sunday. Are you doing anything? He said, well, no. And I said, I'm not doing anything either. And so we we just decided to do it. It was great. We had great callers, and I got some interesting stories out of Len in the Spreaker chat room. And, you know, it, it, was, it, 
was kind of like our own party, so that was a good thing. No, I thought it was. It was it. I, th I thought it was fantastic. I thought it was mm -hmm. fantastic. I did a little bit of work on the show, mm -hmm. you know, because we always have to change things up, and you know, I, um, you know, I think I'm pretty happy with the way things are coming down. It was just nice and relaxing. I didn't have to worry about anything. That's what I like. Yeah. You know, I do want to mention that I believe you are coming up here this year for the official first annual Caribou Paracon put on by Spaced Out Radio and Questers of Canada. And that will be the weekend of September 28th to the 30th at the Spruce Hills Resort and Spa. We've already got the place booked. Everything is going, barring forest fires. Knock on wood. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, we are we are ready to go, and we're ready to start pushing for a a great event that's going to be very well rounded. I have to confirm a couple of the speakers, and once I get that confirmed, I think it's going to be just a, a wonderful event filled with some very good times, and we want to make sure all our Spaced Out Radio listeners have the opportunity to be there. Bill Hauser, I found out today, moments ago, Bill Hauser from our live Ghost Box sessions is going to be there doing live Ghost Box sessions. He's going to get himself a table, and he's going to be a part of our paranormal panel. It's going to be good to have Bill up here for the weekend. So that's exciting. Yeah, that is exciting. I've only done a couple of those live ghost box sessions, so it'll, it'll be a lot more fun in person, I think. But yeah, that is cool. Really cool. I think, it, I think it'll be a lot of fun. I think it's going to be and, a lot of fun. Well, I, I'm actually looking forward to the SOR hot tub which I've heard about for so, so long and have not had a chance to, to enjoy yet. So, um, you know, if you don't see me when the whole conference is going on, it's because I am in the SOR hot tub and, and you know, cause I'm a hot tub muffin basically. So sorry if you don't see me, that's where I'll be. Well, you know what? You have a hot tub. There are a few hot tubs there, a few hot tubs, <laughs> but Corey has the official SOR hot tub, so we're going to have to open that up to a very select group of, of people, and hopefully, just hopefully, when you're out there, the Northern Lights come out to play. Yeah, that would be great. And you have moose up there, right? Canada has moose. I, I yes. haven't seen moose since I lived in Michigan. And, you know, it's the kind of thing you think in western Colorado you would have moose. They they put them back on Grand Mesa, but they hadn't migrated over to where I lived. So, you know, I want to see a moose. Everybody, I want to see what critters you guys have I, up I, here in Canada. You know what? I, I've seen, since I've been here, I've seen three moose out in the wild. And but I want to see one of them big bull moose that have like the the giant rack. I haven't seen that yet. I want to see that. That and wolves is what I really want to see. I've seen pretty oh and Sasquatch of course, but mm -hmm. but out of all the animals the, and a grizzly bear. Pardon me. I know I'm adding up here, but we have so many different f animals here from from you know cougars to bobcats to lynx to martins to ptarmigans which i did see you know and if you come in the summertime up here uh what's the word i'm looking for pelicans actually come onto the local lakes here oh wow yeah That's pelicans neat. i i've ne i'd never seen a pelican until this year but no i want to i want to see a big bull moose with the with the horns and, and the ant, the giant antlers i think that would be really cool haven't seen one of them before but i'd also like to see a grizzly bear because i haven't seen a grizzly bear in the wild and i think that would be kind of cool that would be very cool well we'll have to go we'll have to also i'll have to take more time so i can go critter watching while i'm up there besides all the exciting conference stuff 
Well, we are um, we are the week after Eric Cooper's Force Moon Paracon. So what we're telling everybody is if you have the opportunity and the ability to do so, come to Concrete Washington for September 22nd, 23rd, and then on your week off of work, if you have the ability to do that, you drive on up north. And you come to the Caribou Paracon in 108 Mile Ranch, British Columbia. Remember, if you're American, the prices are cheaper because I think it's only 77, 78 cents a dollar. That's the equivalent of a Canadian dollar. So you're getting like a dollar 23 on your money around there for every dollar. It's a great little holiday, great little getaway. You could see where we broadcast in the old log cabin here of SOR headquarters, you know, and who knows. What I might do is if we get enough spaced out radio listeners attending this, I might even throw a party at my house. I may do that. We'll, we'll set a big bonfire in the back, you know. We'll get Tony, the neighbor who's a firefighter, he can watch over it. Maybe stoke it a couple of times, bring the fire... Uh, truck out if it gets too hot but you know there's a lot that we can do we'll figure it out we will definitely figure it out it's party at dave's time. house party <laughs> at dave's house that's right that's right yeah. party at dave's house that sounds good so you have a lot going on for the new year right dave i'm not just going to interview you but you have a lot going on well we do we do around here. We are, like I said, we are pushing the the GoFundMe page very, very hard right now because we have five radio stations locally here in British Columbia who want to pick us up. Plus, we have other stations that are waiting for us for the terrestrial. And I think this is our year, Liz. I really do. I am fully convinced that this is our year. I'm. I've had, you know, some really good readings and i think it is the sor year i think it's coming up i think it's going to happen and you know you're going to have to hang on for the ride man just mm-hmm. hang on mm-hmm. that horse is going mm-hmm. well very very cool mm-hmm. very cool i think it's going to be a lot of fun because you know you add five stations right off the bat and it automatically gives you that credibility. And all of a sudden, other stations start looking, well, what, what's that show over there? What what are they picking up? And, and what's that all about? And then I think we'll get the numbers. I think we'll get everything that we need. I, th- I really believe this is our year. This is the first year in a long time I've started off very, very positive. Normally, not that I'm a negative person, but I usually am one of those, well, what if type people. You know, what if it doesn't go this way? What if it doesn't? But this year I'm trying to be different. You know, I don't know if it's going to work. I, Liz, I don't know if it's going to work, but I'm trying my damnedest. Good. Good deal. Me too. So I've got some stuff coming up I want to tell people about. All right. Fire away. Okay. So um, I have some clients. Believe it or not, I have clients who who need to take spirit mediumship class. So I'm going to be doing an on-the-phone conference call uh, beginning mediumship class in starting in February. If you are interested in being in that group, it's going to be a very fun group because the people who who need to be taken it, who, who have had their guides come through, smack them in the head, then smack me in the head and say, teach this, darn you are really great people. Um, But if you want to be involved, you can go to, you can email me at info at elizabethanglin.com. And if you're doing any sort of paranormal investigations, this could be something that you can add to your toolbox. And you are welcome as a paranormal investigator. And if you think you have mediumship capabilities and have never been formally trained, not formerly, but formally trained, the protocols I use, or the, the training I use, uh, comes from the oldest spiritualist church in North America, the first spiritual temple in Boston, Massachusetts, from the Air Institute there. So um, it's good, solid training, and uh, you are welcome. Just email me, info at elizabethanglin.com, and that'll start February 14th and go for eight weeks so that's one thing. 
the next thing I found in my shop, everybody wanted metaphysical stuff. So I'm changing the whole format of my gallery. And it's now because people were just buying the metaphysical stuff. I'm going to sell metaphysical stuff. So that's the other thing. The main thing. But that's kind of cool. It's going to be busy. New new displays, new everything. Um, and let's see. And we have some good shows coming up for Cosmic Passport in January. We have letters to uh, love letters to Leo Sprinkle with Kate Grabowski on Sunday. And Kate has gone through all of Leo Sprinkle's archives with letters from abductees. So if you are an abductee, if you want to hear what other people are saying and what they're writing and have written for decades to Leo Sprinkle, this will be the show for you. It's going to be a great show, and I'm really, really looking forward to it. Um, And then we have Paisley back the week after and then Eric and I are going to be talking about time crystals and wonky new discoveries in 2017 and how they, what they have to do with the paranormal and possibly sci-fi that we've all been thinking about forever. Cause if you are listening to this show and you're not into sci-fi, what's wrong with you? I mean, no, you aren't listening to this show. If, if you haven't at some point in your life been into sci-fi. So that'll be, the week after so that's what's going on with cosmic passport that's my news sounds like a great year scheduled for you so far how do you keep it how do you keep it going what how do you build momentum on that how do i build momentum (laughs) i try not to get stuck in the mud (laughs) let's see yeah i mean it is it is like energetically when you have a setback it can be really hard to build momentum again because you're afraid to get hopeful and I think I've recognized that about myself it's like I can get very hopeful and then I can get very dejected and it's a matter of you know I hate to sound like George Bush because I used to yell at him when he was on TV but you know stay the stay the course thousand points of light it's just you know it's like stay the course what was your plan all right that way of making your plan happen didn't didn't go the way you you expected but you know just stay the course and keep on going and when i do that everything seems to work out i just sort of i ground myself i reground myself to okay well that particular thing didn't work but there are 250 ways to wash the dishes. So there are 250 ways to get this overall plan done. You know, you can have plan A, plan B, plan C, et cetera. And, you know, just go on to plan B if plan A didn't work. So I have to, I have to have a little pep talk, a little, hey, it's all about the problem solving and getting it done. And then I just keep going. But, um, yeah, overcoming the dejection when I get really hopeful and then go about going forward in, in one way and then, oh, that didn't work. A friend of mine said that I'm one of those few people who tries to, you know, uh, that the way it looks to spirit about me is that I try to drive to the grocery store at 95 miles an hour and nobody needs to drive to the grocery store that fast. <laughs> so, you know, I could, I could just slow down and then I wouldn't get so dejected. And that seems to be the case. I've gotten old enough to really appreciate that advice. Was I trying to go too fast? Oh, yeah, I guess so. Okay. Slow down. Not you. Uh, Not you on nah. speed mode. <laughs> yeah, me me on Mountain Dew. <laughs> you know, and six cups of coffee. You don't want to yes. know her. <laughs> yes, I know there's an orange tin of Sanka somewhere in your cupboards from 1978. <laughs> Oh, no, there isn't. I only have really good black magic and, you know, organic black magic. It's got to be dark and it's got to be strong and, you know, and, yeah, and Mountain Dew. <laughs> so, you I'm, know, I think I'm, I think I think I'm one of the only people who's never grabbed a taste for Mountain Dew. Well, it's it's not the it's not the taste. It's I think it actually is the caffeine. Because I don't think, I've had some really terrible tasting Mountain Dew. And and when I was growing up, I would never, ever drink this stuff. I'd be like, why are you offering me that? 
but it, as time has gone on, I realize how much caffeine is in it. Um, you know, if it's a, it's, if it's part of the day that I don't really want to drink coffee, then it's Mountain Dew because it's, it's as good as a couple cup of cups of coffee easily. And, you know, for the spiritual part of you, this is probably not something you should do. <laughs> so, but, you know, a little bit of some things sometimes is, is okay. You know, some caffeine sometimes is okay. But if you're, if you are trying to ground, it's probably not a good idea. Just sometimes. Looking at 2018, what is your recommendation to your clients on how to create a good positive year for them? Um, oh gosh, it's, it's like a, it's like a rock song that Eric Markham played for me on the way to, to Paracon. And I can't remember the name of it. Um, yesterday is gone. Um, it really is this year, what seems to be the main thing I've been getting in year ahead readings and career readings is drop the obsession with things that appear to be problematic or people that appear to be problematic, just drop it and, and stay positive and stay forward thinking and have as much fun as you can. I've had spirit say so much this year at the end of the year readings going into next year, have as much fun as you can with everything that you're doing. And even if you have problems, don't perseverate or obsess about the fact that they're problematic. Look at them like they're very small and it's like, have the perspective that, okay, this is a problem. You know, I have a flat tire. Um, I'll call the, the tow truck. And, you know, when the gorgeous tow truck guy shows up and fixes the tire, have a lot of fun with that. Because what Spirit's been saying is that people will get kind, that it's kind of a trickster beginning of the year. Like you, you, you're going forward, but you have all these unexpected little inconveniences and bumps and it seems to be that the learning for a lot of people is take the bumps with a with with a lot of sense of humor like this is a year that's going to help you develop your sense of humor and even your black and ironic sense of humor and this is not just for me this is a lot of my clients have been getting that so that's what I'm going to do it's like oh well you know okay that didn't go as planned well we'll just do this. And, and that I have found in the past year, I've learned to do that more. But the beginning of this year, I'm being told everybody is going to, everybody so far that I've read for is going to need a similar, a similar type of guidance. Well, okay, what's next and have fun with it. Make jokes out of it. Um, Don't, let it be the be all and end all of if something goes wrong, it's not the be all and end all. It's just a moment. It's just what happened in that situation and everything's going to change. I think that there's a speeding up because normally when I see this kind of pattern, there's a speeding up where people are starting to vibrate at a higher level. And so I think certain people are starting to vibrate quicker, more quickly and at a higher level. And when that happens, you're sort of, you're, you're pushing out old negativities. And when those old negativities come to the surface, then you see them very clearly. And this energy of this year coming in seems to be pushing out those old negativities. And so you just want to have a sense of humor about it. Oh, look, there goes that negativity. Oh, yeah, I do obsess about that. Oh, yeah, I do self-sabotage that way. You just want to look at it and watch it go. Because something, some energy of the universe is fueling these little bumps and slights and baubles and tricks and and little negativities all coming out and just leaving. So just watch them go and stay positive is what I've been getting. So that's my plan is to watch the negative things go 
and stay positive. And we had a wonderful Mercury retrograde in December to start off that process for the new year of looking at the stuff that, yeah, that doesn't really work anymore now, does it? Oh, look, that doesn't work. Okay, well, let's try the next thing. So... You mentioned self-sabotage. Is that something that can happen, you know, or that a lot of people do in order to, you know, affect the way their year turns out? Like we were talking with Rachel in our number one, you know, a lot of people had bad years in 2016, followed up by a worse year in 2017, that they may be a little bit apathetic or hesitant going into 18 which we are in now because time doesn't stop, you know, Mm -hmm. wondering whether or not that's going to carry over, Liz. Well, you know, I've had a similar problem because I had a lot of, I had health issues that were undiagnosed in 2016. So my business didn't, and my health didn't go as I expected. I had those health issues carried over into 2017 and they seem to be resolved now. And I'm, I'm not getting that I'm going to have those health issues. I'm really getting a clear pathway ahead. Uh, I think it's going to, I think the important learning, at least for some of us, is that if you've noticed that you self-sabotage in a certain way, you know, after two years of maybe not having the best years, it's time to have learned that lesson and to move into a new way of being. Um, and don't self-sabotage in that way, or don't, you know, it, it, if, if you get told, like even in your own meditations or in your own, you know, your own intuition is telling you, Hey, you're self-sabotaging. Don't do it this way. Listen, this is a year to listen because there's a lot of potential for growth and change and new coming in in 2018. Um, I think you're, I think Rachel was talking about this being a master number year, 11. And it is, 11 is when you bring together all of the things that you've learned in the past and you can really look at them and see them as lessons. And you can use those lessons to create something unbelievable it's a good year for synthesis of old lessons so um yeah take the 11 year and run with it now explain to people who may not understand numerology what the 11 means and how we get there well 11 is a master number for the teacher so i'm i'm very solidly an 11 I, and I, I have 11s all over my chart. And what that, <laughs> what that means is that it's, it's the energy of, you know, if you are an 11, um, you are taking all sorts of information from your past lives. You may remember your past lives. Um, you may have lots of different abilities in this lifetime based on things that you've done in your past life. And you're synthesizing all of that information together in order to teach, but you're, you're also just for yourself synthesizing all that information together and saying, okay, yeah, I mastered riding horses. I mastered writing a novel. I mastered writing a book of poetry. I mastered making moccasins. And and it's really about an, a person who is an 11 or a year that is an 11 is a culmination year of all of the past, of all of the things that were learned and then synthesizing from that a sort of what is it, what is it to be a master? What is it in order to... What, what does that mean? Well, it means that you have a lot of applied knowledge. So from the years past, if you were working on something, you were working on mastering it. Now you have a, this knowledge that you can apply and you can actually show that you have mastered it. So this year leaves the door open for people who've been working on things to show that they've mastered it. 
and also teach it at the same time. Right. So when it comes to the 11, how strong of a number is 11 then? Because wouldn't you break that down to 1 plus 1 equals 2? No. Well, master numbers don't break down like that. I mean, you can say it's a 2, but um, master numbers really are, are not as divisible as other numbers. And 11 is a hugely strong number. Um, people who are 11s are you're you're marked that you know people other people who are intuitives who are psychics they see you walking around as an 11 they're like oh you're a teacher it's like yeah it could be 15 and somebody's saying you're a teacher and there's they're just it's not really divisible by anything else and it's incredibly strong and there's a lot of light on it because it's a light of understanding and a light of clarity um this is the year that's going to feel more clear people are going to feel more clear um because the the energy of 11 is is about clarity and understanding as well um so yeah it's a it's a big big number it's a big year we should give a shout out one of our audience members in the chat room tonight on spreaker has a birthday fellow canadian No, it's Dawn. Dawn tonight. We don't know her age, nor would we ask, because we're polite Canadians that way. Well, maybe not you, but me. But we want to wish Dawn a happy birthday. Happy birthday, Dawn. Happy Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Yay! She's a fellow good Canadian. Treat yourself to an ice cap. Treat yourself to an ice cap. You never go wrong with a little Tim Hortons ice cap. So... Getting back to yeah. the show. Yeah, getting back to the show. When you are looking at setting up your year, okay, and you are looking at are you breaking it into different components like Rachel was talking about breaking it into quarters or sections? Do you do that too? To kind of build up because it's we're we're running a marathon here and we're not running a, a quick race? Well, you know, my year is is often predicated on how what what the business cycles are. So, yes, I'm breaking it up into sections. Um, The first part of the year is very, very dull in Madrid, New Mexico, which is a little art gallery town. And there are not a people not not very many people walking around wanting to buy things because it's cold and because it's kind of out of the way, it's in the mountains, it's windy, um, and we have a sort of cafe community here where people are attracted to that. They're they're attracted to music out on the deck of the Mineshaft tra- Tavern and music at the Holler Restaurant, and they're attracted to talking to hippies who are, really are the real hippies and, and writers and that sort of thing, and without the warmth the cafe community just sort of doesn't doesn't start it's a non-starter because there's you know nobody can sit out at the cafe tables and without freezing their butt off so what what happens at this time is people make stuff if you're going to make jewelry you make jewelry i'm going to be making tin work and i am going to be learning how to make pottery Um, I'm going to be buying things for March when all the students go on um, vacation, if I can afford to buy anything. I may be going to Arizona to go rock hounding and go to the to the um, gem festivals in Arizona and Tucson and Quartzsite. So, you know, it's that the planning is sort of am I traveling or am I or am I building things? Am I building up? Am I am I changing the store around? So it it's it is really sort of that get prepared for working time of year. And then when as the light comes back in March and April, um it's see what you, for me it's see what you're attracting because that's when people start to come back. And it's interesting because March, the type of people who come in or come to me in March and April are usually the kind of people that I'll start seeing the rest of the year. And and so far, it's always been good people. 
but there's something it it's like spirit is saying okay you are learning about this so you're going to get a lot of clients who are also learning about that and i'll start seeing them come in in march and so then it then becomes this this sort of other energetic learning period of i'm giving messages for people who have the same messages like i need to hear that message too and they've been guided to come to me so that's like usually the next part of the year um and then by summer it's very odd because it gets very dull in august like not much happens usually and then it picks up again in september august seems to be a review period something about the eight for me is always a review period and then by the time we hit the first week of september Um, things start moving very, very quickly toward the end of the year, but I don't plan for it. I, and that might be partially, that's just the way it seems to work. Um, but I don't plan a lot because, you know, having been an abductee and having had a life where there was, you didn't really get to plan for what was going to happen. There was a high degree of unpredictability about what was going to happen in your life you you really learn not to plan <laughs> because if you were if you got your hopes up about anything happening a certain way it it was going to get wrecked so i'm not a i'm not a huge planner because i i had lots i was a planner in high school and then i went through this whole long period of of the abduction stuff and it was like oh i i have to live with a high degree of unpredictability and so um you know i I don't want to get too hung up on plans. Um, plans can plans can make you plans that are that don't come through can can make you feel very bad. So I try not to get too hung up on them. But yeah. Do you believe in resolutions? Always, but I'm always making resolutions. I started making my New Year's resolutions in September. And and they were really sort of October resolutions, and now they're January resolutions. But it, it really, they come true if you turn them into habits. And the issue for me is how many resolutions have I been able to turn into habits? And um, so I'm still working on that. But uh, yeah, I make resolutions because I go by guidance. I go by what um, my guides tell me it's time for me to do and oftentimes it's change a habit or start a new habit or start a new um, art form or uh, start a new project and the the issue is really to make anything get done is to start the habit of doing it every day or have a habit that works every week that that I'm working on so I believe in them but I don't believe in them just for January that it's it's all year long. Oh, wait. Okay. So this is a new thing. Okay. I've got to start doing this. All right. No. How can I make that a habit? And, and it's, it's sometimes harder than it looks, but you just keep working on making a habit. Six weeks to a habit. Is that what it is? Six weeks? It's six weeks to make something a habit. And there are books on how to do it. I bought them. (laughs) I haven't always succeeded, but I have the books on how to make a habit. Because, you know, I was getting, I, I, for years, for 20 years, I've gotten, you know, guides all the time saying, make this a habit, make this a habit, make this a habit. And it's like, oh, all the habits. So I should be a nun, but I'm not. You a nun? I highly doubt that. (laughs) I highly doubt that. I, my first year of college was at a Dominican, uh, now university, it was a college at the time, and the Dominican nuns, they were great swearers. They loved to swear, they loved to drink, they loved to tell dirty jokes. You just don't tell your mama that. So, they were great fun. You know, we also want to wish a happy birthday to Ozzy Andy. Ozzy Andy is celebrating his birthday. Technically, it's not today here. It's tomorrow for us, but it's today for him. So we are going to, you know, make sure that we have that ability to say happy birthday to you, Ozzy Andy, as well. And thanks for sharing it with us. 
here on the SOR. So that's kind of cool for you, too. Yeah, Andy, happy birthday. You made it through another year. Woohoo! Good old Ozzy Andy. Ozzy Andy. And tomorrow, it's Catherine James, our social media person. Woohoo! All these great Capricorns. I know. My birthday is next week. Yes. On the My- 11th. <laughs> so yeah go capricorns well my daughter is on the 17th so it's going to be it's going to be great yeah go That's stubborn good. capricorns i i know i know you know i'm excited for our new feature coming up here yeah okay what is it thought of the dave Thought of the Dave. Thought of the Dave. We're going to fire it up in like five minutes. I'm, I'm kind of geeking out about it. Kind of geeking okay. out about it. So, you know, we'll figure that out. I'll let you know about it in like five minutes. So, it's just the way it is. I even got some intro music to it. I'm kind of, a, uh, I've been working on this for a while, man. I've been working on this. It's finally time. Good. Yeah. yeah. So. Yeah. So, before we get to that, because we have about four minutes before we're going to get to that, (laughs) I want to get your thoughts on what kind of energy does the year 2018 have? Well, you know, we, we did this on Sunday night, and Paul was talking about the freight train energy, that this is going to be a really good year for business for a lot of people. Um, It's going to be a really good year for doing things with people that you know, people that you like, especially if you're in Canada, um, doing business with friends. Um, It's going to be a year of feeling like there are less, fewer restrictions um, that, that people may feel less restricted unless you're really poor, which I'm on the borderline of that. So maybe I'll feel more restricted, but that if you are doing some kind of business or you're doing some sort of project or some sort of creative work or or you're in politics, business and politics and projects and creative work, you should feel less restricted. If you are, you're in, you're not able to do those things. It may feel more restrictive to you because we've, you know, because of where things have gone and just the energy of that. So, um, it is also, I think that more secrets are going to come to light. Um, I'm really feeling that, that lots of secrets are going to come to light and everybody's going to go, Oh yeah, I knew that. Oh yeah, I knew that. And it won't, it won't really matter if they're sort of public figure secrets or personal relationship secrets that that people will just look at the secrets that are revealed and go but i knew that you know i could be upset but i knew that already um and there's also a sense that the people who went through an ascension process in 2012 2013 are really going to start to notice how much more intuitive they have become and so you know when when things are brought to light and the truth is out, they'll go, yeah, but I knew that the whole time. Because why? Because, wow, because I'm clued in now. I'm clued in with the whole. So people who were wondering what was happening with your ascension process will go, oh, right, there it is. I see it. Yeah, I I am connected with the whole in a much different way. Um. I think it's really going to be a good year for a lot of people. And and almost to the extent that even if something bad happens, people will just shrug it off. Like, oh, that was terrible. All right, shrug it off, you know, shake it off. So I I have I have high expectations for the year being good for many, many people. Well, that's a positive outlook. Yeah. Well, aren't you just a bag full of sweet jelly beans? Hey, jelly beans are awesome. Don't knock jelly beans. I am not, you know, (laughs) I I don't like the yellow ones. The yellow ones I'm not fans of. 
just yeah it was like mountain dew you know those are yellow can be a eat, don't eat yellow snow and maybe exactly. not yellow jelly beans exactly exactly yeah. you know i'm more of a uh, swedish berries kind of guy do you got swedish berries down there swedish <laughs> we have <laughs> we have some other things which i won't mention on air we don't have we have swedish fish oh. we have the fish Oh, the see, they come in like little raspberry shapes. Oh, you're missing out. You're yeah, missing well, out. Yeah, well, I think the fish are the same same thing, and you can usually get them when you go to a movie. All so. right. Liz, hold on a second here. got to fire up the music. There we go. we got Mr. Bumblefoot's Cuterebra playing right now. We're starting a brand new feature here on Thought of the Dave on Space Out Radio. Now, Thought of the Dave is a concept we actually came up with a little while ago. Myself, Everett Themer, we came up with this where I started posting questions on my Facebook profile and to get your reaction to them. So we're going to start this and make this a daily feature on this show here, the final 10 minutes, so that way we can kind of bring you into it. It's another way that we have opened up the lines of communication for all of you to be a part of this show because we want you to be a part of it. That's what makes this so special. All of you get to be involved with the show as well. So my question on the thought of the day of today was... To start off the new year, we see a lot of people turn to psychics to start off their year looking for predictions on what is coming. Do you buy into these year-long predictions where you see psychic people who are very talented, you know, predicting what's going to happen in March, June, July, October, November, December? So these are some of the comments that we got. Liz, please feel free to weigh in here because you're a part of this team. PJ (laughs) stated, it's a waste of time. It's perhaps similar and as worthwhile as reading toenail clippings, but for many, it's a worthy social event to pretend to buy into it all or just play total skeptic for fun. PJ is the person who walks by my sign on the street, disses it, and is totally evil. That's who you are, PJ. I know so many people like you who walk by my sign and totally diss it. So that's what I think about that answer. All right. Wow. (laughs) Angela, who has been a guest on this show, she actually introduced me to the ghost in my yard. She says, I like to go back a year later and see what they got right and what they didn't. Most of them claim they get so much right, but they don't. I know I should be all for them and cheering them on, but some of them just don't know what they are claiming to know. I agree with that answer. Let's get to... I Yeah, I actually do. I, I did a year ahead thing for... Um for the alibi magazine. And unfortunately it was a setup by Ben Radford. I remote viewed 2008 and I actually got quite a bit, very, very right because I remote viewed it. Like I sat and I did remote viewing sessions for different things Mm -hmm. that were happening in the world. And I spent a lot of time on it. Some other people came up with stuff that some people came up with stuff like some guy just really nailed the, um, the the downturn at the end of 2008 with the collapse of the of um you know the economy and mortgages in the US etc um really nailed it mm-hmm. i got floods in the midwest i got um some other things in taiwan i got i got uh ex- more e coli outbreaks so i i mm-hmm. and i got the first major hurricane of the year but I got dissed because I said it was going to, the, the first major hurricane of the year, I said it was going to be in the first third of the hurricane season. And I was off by a day because I didn't realize hurricane season happened in June. Wow. Like it started in June. Wow. And I thought, Shame on you. Do, I know Shame I was off you. by a day, you know, oh my Terrible. gosh. 
but I think it's good to review because there was somebody saying that Yellowstone was going to blow up and blah, you know, <laughs> it was like people were, were predicting all of this, all sorts of things that were dire that didn't happen. And um, so anyway, I agree right. with that. Like, you should go back and look at it. Okay, all go on all to the next All one. right. Devin says, it depends on your point of view. Predictions generally are just a momentary reading of the strongest possible probabilities in that moment free will and timeline jumping being the monkey wrench that changes everything focus on something give it energy and effort and it will have a higher probability of manifesting for you the positive messages give hope the negative reminds us to be vigilant i agree with this one uh yeah this is perfect that's a perfect answer for it individuals it's it's i couldn't say it any better it's perfect all right, Keith comes out and says, for me, waste of time. It's not due to the fact that this is hokum, but my personal faith demands that I seek answers from other sources. Now, there's the religious side coming on in, and you can't blame them for, you know, not wanting to change their faith. Barrett jumps in and says, I know the vast majority of TV, radio, media psychics are just entertainers, but I still find myself listening. You know, it's hard to look away from a car chase. And realistically, some of them are real car chases. They really are. I'm going to boot through Tanya's here. Numerology has never failed for me. It's right on point with things, and because of that, it plays a big part in my life. But as for psychic predictions, I think it depends. There are some that I trust and some that I don't, but I don't depend on their predictions. It's still in here, it's, here. It's still interesting and entertaining to listen to them, though. And Ozzy Rob states, and he gets the final comment of the night, having no formal training on the matter, I'm still learning. Some I trust, but others that require, uh, pardon me, others that require time to chart a prediction come off to me as either not yet self-confident or plain out charlatans if they are using other source than numerology. I think it's been an interesting, interesting run on the entire subject it really has you know Mm -hmm. and on that note we'll have a new question for thought of the day tomorrow with your responses on my facebook profile elizabeth anglin thank you so much for being on spaced out radio tonight what a pleasure it is to chat with you again because you know i love having you on the air with me this is where you say good night Oh, right. Oh, that dang mute button. Yes, Dave, thank you. And good not night, everybody. Not a problem. Liz, you hold on. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wrap this thing up. We also want to say thank you to the modern Shaw woman, Rachel Kirkland with the Spiritual You. Rachel comes on for the first two hours of the first Tuesday of every month. Liz comes on for hour number three to wrap things up. It's a full night of spirituality, the second Tuesday of every month. Tomorrow night on the program, I highly recommend you check this out. Dr. Scott Kolbaba is going to join us. We're talking about paranormal experiences that doctors have had. The untold stories that many doctors don't want to admit is happening in their offices, in their operating rooms, and so much more. We get going at 9 p.m. Pacific, midnight Eastern time. I want to remind you about our GoFundMe account, gofundme.com forward slash we own the night. Help us raise money to build a brand new spaced out radio studio so we could take this show terrestrial. And if you don't have the funds, that's okay. Sharing it means just as much to us. Thank you so much for supporting us. GoFundMe.com forward slash we own the night. I want to give a big shout out to everybody listening at home, at work, in their cars for taking a chance at listening to us. Everybody at hashtag spaced out radio on Twitter, in the SOR Space Travelers group, and in Spreaker for participating in tonight's chat you've been awesome you make it a lot of fun and thank you for sharing our show our gofundme account talking to people about us we keep getting bigger and better because 2018 is our year because together my friends we own the night i will talk to you in exactly 21 hours from now i hope you attend because i'm gonna be here happy birthday to both don and andy kit kat Your birthday, too. Happy birthday to you. Mr. Bumblefoot, we need a favor. We need you to take us home. Have a good one. Talk to you tomorrow night. Bye-bye.